initially we take a, a, a live cast and then we get the actor in and we do a photo session with them. And then usually I have a play around in Photoshop, you know, transposing one, uh, you, you know, you can even take a picture of Maxwell and cut and paste and paint over it and give myself an idea of what it's going to look like. And then, um, and then we just start the sculpture really. I had uh, um, a, a sculptor called Josh Weston, who's been doing a lot of stuff uh, working with me over the last uh, five or six years and longer even. And uh, he started sculpting on the plaster cast of Roger's head. It's becoming a part of it more and more technology. Um, we, in this instance, uh, we have a, hand, uh, a scanner, a facial scanner in the workshop that I've just purchased. So we're able to uh, take a 3D scan of the actor's face now and then 3D print it. Uh, what we found this time, when we, when we take a life cast, it's, uh, it's a, a material, a rubber material that's pasted over someone's face and backed up with plaster bandage. And what we found, the weight of the material can distort the shapes a little bit. You know, it distorts the bottom lip. And we found that it distorted this a little bit and the cheeks. So we 3D printed that and placed it in into the life cast of uh, Roger before we did the um, master mold in order to start the sculpting process, you know, just so that we had the correct expression. So more and more, we're using that kind of technology the basic process is you have your, you know, you take your head cast of the actor, you have a plaster cast, and then uh, you sculpt in, in uh, uh, oil-based clay, or we do. Uh, we sculpt the whole makeup in an oil-based clay. Um, once we've got the character, we then uh, submerge the whole sculpture underwater, uh, and we have a, a, a separating material from the plaster to the, to the, to the oil-based clay, uh, or wax-based clay, um, and then we can lift off various parts of the sculpture so you you'll cut through the sculpture take the forehead piece off you'll blend away the cheek edge and then you'll make a, a separate mold of that particular area to make your core and then you place the forehead piece back on and that way you separate out the forehead and you do the same with the nose and with the face piece you take it off and you make the cores separately so you, you work in reverse into the reverse way you're going to stick it on and then we mould each of those pieces separately. Uh, the mould is open, the clay is cleaned out, leaving the space in between. We spray a plastic barrier on both sides of the mould, pl place the mould back together again and inject silicon into it. And that once the silicon is set, it almost creates like a bag with a dissolvable uh, plastic edge. And that's how we get our final appliances. They're made out of uh, silicon, out of a mold. So it's quite a long process. Probably six weeks to uh, create this makeup from start to finish. Jan was uh, making the wig, and it's, so it's like, you know, where are we going to end the end the wig? Are we going to keep Roger's hair at the back and color that? So that's what Jan's doing at the moment. Her and her team they'll cover color uh, um, Roger's hair at the back, and the wig ends uh, just below his crown. And then he's got a full lace front. Um, you know, you've got several options uh, uh, with with the way the hair and uh, the, the the actor's hair and the wig is gonna are gonna combine. You know, so we just have some discussions and work it out between us uh, with how our prosthetics are gonna work and technically how the how the hair is gonna work. You know, do you keep Roger's sideburns or do you cover them up and create the whole thing in a wig? You know, and in this instance, it was it was it was better to uh, create the whole temple hair hairline and wig and everything so he's completely covered but keep the back of his hair so you keep all this uh, stuff at the nape of the neck